how to calculate the growth of a stock. In today's video, we're going to talk about exactly how you can quickly calculate the growth of a business through its four key growth numbers, and then how you can use this number in predicting future growth. This is the method that I personally had success with and many other successful investors including Phil Town use this method in their day-to-day -day valuations in order to predict where stock prices are going. Make sure you stick around to the end in this one so that you can learn exactly how I make my spreadsheet and how to interpret the data within it. There are far too many videos out there on YouTube which just give you information and they don't actually tell you how you can apply these skills in practice and in your own valuations. So throughout this entire video, I'm going to show you exactly how I go about tracking down these numbers, how I enter them into a spreadsheet and make my spreadsheets, and then how I interpret them in order to find the most accurate growth number that I can use in predicting where a company is going in the future. If you are enjoying the content and you're new around here, consider subscribing. I try to provide as much practical value as possible, and if you have a video suggestion, I will most likely be able to make it like I have with this video. So what are the key numbers? Now, there are many different numbers in financials that you could look at. However, these four key numbers are by far the most important. In this video, I'm just going to briefly go over what these numbers are because that's not the entire point of this video. However, if you are interested in learning more about these numbers, I have a video specifically for these key growth numbers. So I'll leave that down in the description below for you to watch after. First, we have sales or revenue growth, which is really important because we want our business to be consistently bringing in more money each year. Next is EPS or earnings per share. And this is important because we want our business to be continuously getting more profitable each and every year. Thirdly, we have equity, which is also known as book value. And this is essentially the assets of a business minus all of its debts. And it's really important because it tells us if a business is getting more valuable each and every year. And lastly, we have free cash flow, which is really important because we want our business to be consistently bringing in more money each and every year for investments and paying down debts. Next, I just want to talk about how I find these numbers because there's a lot of YouTube videos out there about the information on these numbers, but not a lot of practical advice in how to implement it using spreadsheets and that sort of thing. So before we find these numbers, let's set up the spreadsheet that we're going to enter these numbers into. So before we look at the numbers, let's just set up a spreadsheet. So we're going to need along the vertical, we're going to need sales, earnings per share, equity and free cash flow. And along the top, we're going to have the years for the last 10 years. So it's going back 2008, 2009, and then all the way up to 2018. Like that. Now there's a couple of websites we're going to go to to get these numbers. Unfortunately, they're not all in one website. But the first website we're going to is the Wall Street Journal website, which is wsj.com. And this is where we're going to find the numbers for the past five years. So what you're going to do is you're just going to type in your company's name in the search here and it will come up like this. And over here you can find the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. So if we just go to the income statement, you'll see that sales is right here and here are the numbers and you just want to plug those five numbers in. And then we come down and here is earnings per share. And we want to use diluted over basic at all times. So these are the numbers that we're going to look for, even though a lot, a lot of the time um, they'll be the same. And I'll talk about the differences of those um, in another video. Next, we want to go over to the balance sheet. And at the bottom of the balance sheet, we, we can find equity, just here. And lastly, we want to go to the cash flow statement. And right at the bottom, here is free cash flow. Now, I just want to mention that free cash flow isn't actually on the cash flow statement, but kindly enough, Wall Street Journal has calculated it for us and they put it at the bottom of their cash flow statement on their website. So now we have the data for the last five years. However, we want to go back another five years so that we have 10 years in total. And the next five years is a little bit trickier to get. However, once you've done it a couple of times, it becomes really easy. So you want to go to Google and you want to type in your company's name along with investor relations. And through that search, you should be able to find the investor relations page on your company's website. And it's in there that you will be able to find the annual reports, which is where all of the financial statements are kept. So we're going to open some of these annual reports and we're going to look for the numbers that we need. Now for sales, earnings per share and equity, it's really straightforward. You just go into the annual report, scroll down to where the financial statements are and copy the numbers over. And you'll actually notice that most of the annual reports have numbers for two to three years back. 
So they'll have the current year or whatever year the annual report is for, and then they'll have maybe the past two years results. So you don't actually have to look through every single annual report for those five years that we're looking for, you just have to open two or three of them. As I mentioned earlier, free cash flow isn't actually on the cash flow statement. So for these years, we're gonna need to calculate it by taking the operating cash flow and minusing expenditure on property, plant and equipment. Once we have all the data from the past 10 years for sales, equity, earnings per share and free cash flow, we're ready to calculate the growth of these numbers over time. Now we wanna take the raw data and calculate what growth each has achieved over a nine year period, five year period, three year period and one year period. And we do this because we don't just wanna know what the long term growth is, we wanna know and see that that long term growth is improving each year. So first we just need to make another table. So we're gonna take these again, um, but instead across the top, we're gonna to have one year, three year, five year and nine year. Um, and then we're gonna to need to, we're gonna to need to use a formula um, to calculate these growth numbers, which is good because it's easy, but the formula is a little bit complicated. Um, however, you can just copy me. So you wanna do equals rate, um, open bracket, and then you want to put in one, two commas, negative, and you want to pick, so we're doing EPS, so we're going to pick 2016, comma, 2017, close bracket. And that gives us the growth rate for that. So basically what I did here was the one is how many periods we're doing. So for the first one, it's going to be one. For the next column, it's going to be three and then five and then nine. This negative K2 is the oldest number that we're picking and because we're doing over one year, we're going 2016 to 2017. And then the purple number is the latest year and that will always be the latest year. And then we're just gonna put a couple of dollar signs in front of these so that they hold and we can just drag that down. And then as you can see um, over here, it's already done it for us and it's taken it down. Cool, so then we just do the next one which is rate Instead of one, we've got three now, two commas, negative, and we're gonna go the three. So it's not, it's not gonna be three numbers back, it's gonna be like three jumps. So it's like one jump, two jumps, three jumps. So we're gonna start there and there. And then of course the dollar signs at the front and drag it down. Cool. And then we do five. Um, which is this, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five, yep. And then lastly, the nine year. That was five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I did that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. So then we've got all of our growth numbers calculated for us. So from these numbers, we're able to predict future growth. And there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you're making this estimation that will make sure that you're as accurate as possible. If a company's numbers aren't consistent, we can't accurately predict future growth. And this is because if a company's numbers are all over the place, they're positive and negative, or maybe they're just not uniform and they're not growing consistently together, then we have no reason to believe that the company won't continue to do this in the future. And it means that the future growth of a company is really uncertain. So we wanna make sure we stick to businesses that show really consistent and uniform growth across all four numbers. The next thing is just to be really conservative because you wanna make sure that you're going to get the returns that you're expecting. And this is the whole philosophy of low risk, high return stock market investing. Be very conservative on the conservative side and only buy stocks when they're really cheap using really low growth numbers or growth numbers that are easily attainable so that when the company matches that or even exceeds it, you're gonna get either the returns you want or far, far superior returns. You also wanna make sure that you're using long-term numbers in your estimate. 
So you don't want to find a company that has really consistent growth, but long-term growth is about 4%, and maybe this year's growth was 30%. You don't want to go and use that 30% in your valuation because we're going to be looking at another 10 years into the future. So you want to make sure that you're using the long-term growth of a company. What is it doing over a huge 10-year period, not just in the last couple of years? And lastly, equity and earnings per share growth are much better predictors of future stock price than free cash flow and sales. So while you want all these numbers to be really uniform, really consistent and all growing consistently, um, you want to look for or look to the equity and the earnings per share for, the, for making those last minute numbers because at the end of the day, the equity which is the core value of a company and the earnings power behind a company is what drives stock price. So that's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you let me know your thoughts down in the comments, leave a like, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.